This video was sponsored by oddbeachexpress.com. Oddbeach Express Stock Media by subscription is a new site that offers high quality broadcast resolution stock media content. Their content includes stock footages up to 5K resolution, music, sound effects, images, and After Effects templates. Sign up today for a free account at oddbeachexpress.com and receive 19 free pre selected stock media downloads. No credit cards, payments, or obligations required. Create your free account today. Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to my After Effects tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create some glitch lower thirds in Adobe After Effects. So what you see right now on the screen is what I'm going to show you today. And this whole thing has been created from scratch in After Effects. So no third party plugins used, no scripts and no special videos of any kind. Everything is After Effects. So this way, a lot of people can follow along and have a good time. Now to anyone who is new to the full program and uh, doesn't know how to create lower thirds in After Effects, no worries. Uh, I'll leave a link to this tutorial in the description. This is one of my own videos and I got some good reviews on this. So maybe this is good, you know, check it out. You can learn a good deal of lower thirds uh, from this video, how to create them, how to, you know, add elements to them, how to create a template from them. So, uh, you know, check it out, link to this in the description, all right? So I'm going to create a new composition and I'm going to call this main. I'm going to create this 720p and I'm going to create this five seconds long. Awesome people. All right. I'm going to create a new solid in this and I'm going to call this box zero one. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to create a simple lower thirds. The main thing to take from this video, awesome people, is to understand how to create the glitches part, right? The very detailed glitches. So anyways, I'm going to run you down to uh, some very basics of lower thirds. But again, watch the other video. It has some very detailed lower thirds knowledge. So I create this simple box, right? Uh, I'm going to open the mask option. I'm going to move to about 20, 25 frames. I'm going to take 20 frames and start the animation for mask path. Move back in time. I'm going to deselect the full thing. Hit the V key for getting to my selection tool and click on this line right here. Or if those two are not selected, you can just marquee select them like this. And I'm going to shift. Uh, I'm going to use my arrow keys to kind of squish it like that. Right now, when it gets very close, I'm going to press Control Shift H to see the full thing without the bounding box. And this is what I'm looking for. Right. The full thing is compressed to the point where we cannot see anything. So now if I was to play this, you can see I get a nice animation where the box is being extended like this. This is nice. I'm going to select both the keyframes, hit the F9 key for easy ease. Go to my graph editor, select one of the points and move it to the left, right? So this way we have a little nice ease to the full motion. Maybe this is too quick. I'm going to take this to 25 frames. So this way, right? This looks very nice to me. Now awesome people, I'm going to take my text tool, press control T. That's a shortcut. I'm going to start typing something. So I'm going to say channel Zengen learning, right? That looks good. I'm going to change my color to black. That looks nice. Zengen learning. Let me just see if I spelled everything right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, scale it up a bit. This looks good. Now awesome people, I'm going to duplicate my box one layer, put it on top of this layer. Uh, this way awesome people, I'm sort of keeping the text layer between the two box layers. I'm going to go to my text layer, go to track mat and make it alpha mat. This way awesome people, we have a nice functioning simple lower third. This is not very detailed, not, uh, you know, heavily animated, but uh, you know, for the tutorials case, this works fine. Okay, this looks good awesome people. Now to getting to creating glitches, I'm going to create a new composition and I'm going to call this glitches or glitch driver, right? I'm going to make this about 15 seconds long and uh, I'm going to make this 720p as well. Create a new solid in this and I'm going to call this fractal, right? Go to FX and presets, take the fractal noise effect, take it and drop it onto the solid. And the first setting, I'm going to change that to terrain. I'm going to change the second value to block. This way we have a nice, uh, you know, this sort of effect. I'm going to go to transform, the uncheck the uniform scaling. And I'm going to take the scale width and I'm going to scale it up to about uh, 2500. Right. So this way we have this scaled up effect. Now, just for the explanation purpose, I'm going to go back to my main layer, my main composition. Sorry. Bring down the glitch driver into this composition and switch it off. Create a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to rename this to glitches. 
and then awesome people i'm gonna go to fx and presets type in displace take the displacement map effect drop it to the adjustment layer and in this the first setting awesome people change that to the glitch driver composition right so you basically want to take the composition in this setting and this way we can see that we're getting those nice you know cut effects if i was to increase the max horizontal displacement you can see we're getting those really nice cut effects uh for me personally i, I didn't really like the vertical dis the displacement that much but for for the you know simple stuff i'm gonna keep it five and i'm gonna add an expression to this max uh horizontal displacement click on that and i'm gonna say random open up parentheses i'm gonna say 10 comma 100 okay close the parentheses or close brackets and now we have a nice animation happening. Now the problem awesome people is that we're not getting a very nice detailed animation. Now the problem is that in the displacement or the glitch driver, this composition, everything is still very static, right? It's not being animated. And in order for this to animate, you're gonna have to animate evolution. So I'm gonna add a simple expression to this, time into 3000 now the, now the reason i'm keeping time to 3000 such a high value is because i don't want it to be evolving i want it to be changing on every frame so if i was to play this you can see the speed is very quick so it's it doesn't look like it's it's, a, it's evolving it looks like it's changing on every frame that is going to be perfect now if i was to play this you can see they're getting the nice glitch effect but right now it's not looking very detailed it looks like as if the whole thing is just dancing so what do we do well, I'm actually going to change this to the random. The first value, I'm going to change it to 50. So it's 50 to 100. Yeah, and this way, we're getting some very powerful glitches. Okay, so this is good. I'm going to go to 25 frame mark and I'm going to press Alt, right bracket. So this way, I'm cutting the layer. And so it's animating at the start and then it is just normal, right? We want to give our viewers time for them to, you know, read what is there on the lower third. We are adding lower thirds to the video for a reason, right? So uh, we need to keep this clean. So the uh, 225 frames animation is good. After that, you know, cut the adjustment layer. All right, now we need to add some details to this. Well, what can we do? Awesome people, one thing that I found out was combining it with my old uh, glitches technique. So uh, create another adjustment layer. By the way, the shortcut to this is Control alt y uh, And I'm gonna call this transform. Go to FX and presets and take transform effect, apply it to this adjustment layer. And what you're gonna do awesome people is before changing the skew or any of the setting, first let's bring the anchor point to the center of the lower third. Now it doesn't have to be exact center. It just has to be, you know, sort of center. Uh, once you do this, you'll see that your lower third just jumps to the center of the composition, which is not right. So we'll go to the position now and bring it into the same place as the anchor point. This way, awesome people, if we were to scale it, this is happening from the center. If you were to do it without doing the anchor point and the position part, the scaling would be a little, you know, distorted a little bit off. So this way, this is gonna work. I'm gonna take this to 125 and i'm gonna take the i'm gonna select the transform adjustment layer go to my rectangle tool and then i'm gonna create a mask like this right then also be able i'm gonna select my transform layer and i'm gonna go to the start i'm gonna hit page down two times so one time page down two time page down and i'm gonna press alt uh page uh sorry alt right bracket this way i'm cutting the layer to only two frames. Now, some of you may think that two frames, oh my God, such a short time. Well, glitches are very, very short, you know, like they last for only frames. So it's important for us to remember that fact and, you know, work accordingly. So only two frames is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this transform, move it ahead in time, go here. And, uh, you know, you, you can change the, uh, the transform property. So maybe in the second transform, we can have the scale to 110 and have the position displaced a little bit like this, right? Um, when we create a transform three by duplicating, in this awesome people, maybe we can change the mask a little bit like that, you know? Um, maybe reduce the scale, but change the position a lot. So this way we're getting some very weird glitches. Create another transform. This time I'm gonna increase the scale to about one, 120 or something and displace 
the position. So this way, awesome people, you see that? So, we, so we're not just having random glitches over here, we're having some details over here as well. Now you'll have to just duplicate this a couple of times, move it here. Maybe bring down the mask to something like this. Change the position, uh, increase the size maybe. I, I don't like to keep the size below 90. If you want to take it down, take it to 90, don't go below than that. Duplicate again, maybe, you know, instead of changing anything, just keep this transform six between two adjustment layers. You'll get a different effect like that. Um, create this one and I'm going to increase the mask of this to a long thing, right? Duplicate this too. Maybe have it overlap the other one. Mm, bring it down. Right. And now also be able once you have created seven, eight of these, you can just duplicate all of them and have them move in like this. Right. So this way we are not walking that much and we are still having a very detailed effect. Right. So this is how I created my glitch lower thirds in After Effects. This awesome people also works with um, a lower third that has a tagline to it. So you can check this out, right? And uh, this lower third has a tagline and uh, you know, the, the, the full technique works with that tagline lower third as well. Are there any more steps for us to do if you're working with a lower third? Yes, there is awesome people. We still need to time remap this. So I'm gonna rename my main composition to underscore zero one lower third and i'm going to take this and i'm going to drop it to another composition this way we have this thing i'm going to rename this to main and this way also we will we need to time remap this so right click on this uh, time enable time remapping i'm going to go to one second mark i'm going to create a keyframe by clicking over here so this way also people we have a keyframe at the very beginning which is zero zero makes sense we move ahead in time and we get to one second mark. Now I'm going to copy this keyframe, control C, and I'm going to jump to about two seconds ahead. So I'm going to go to three and I'm going to paste this keyframe. So this time also be able, this is going to stay proper static. You can see that the, even though the time over here is increasing, the time over here stays the same, right? So, so this way we get, we're creating a two second hold mark. I'm going to copy the first keyframe now, control C, move ahead to one second and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to delete the last keyframe. This is important awesome people, delete the last keyframe. Now awesome people, if I was to play this, you can see that it starts, right? There are a lot of random glitches and everything. It ends and then awesome people, my viewers get the time to read this thing properly. So play it, glitches, it holds for two seconds and then it exits out. So this way awesome people, we are playing the clip backwards, right? So whatever glitches were there uh, at the start will be uh, exactly over here. And this way we, you don't need to animate it, you know, like for an exit point, it already is created for us. So that's a cool thing to remember. And awesome people, uh, you know, this technique is very random. You cannot control it. And that's in my opinion, a good thing about, uh, you know, creating lower thirds, or at least glitch lower thirds like this, because this way everyone is gonna have a different lower third. It, uh, you know, if, if your competition is to watch my tutorial, he doesn't end up with something that you get, right? And if you put more time into this, you're gonna have a better result than your competition. <laughs> so uh, again, you know, take some time, you know, take 10, 15, 20 minutes to make a lower third, create it properly, animate the full thing, maybe watch my other tutorial, you know, and uh, get some tips from this and, uh, you know, create a nice glitch lower third. So thank you for watching my video. My name is TJ Style.